Work from home is a very big deal, especially for a couple of segments of our society. And I want to talk a little bit about that now. As employees are returning to work, should they be returning to the office? There is a great article here this last week in Forbes magazine by Dana Brownlee. And it, it was one of their editors' picks. And it was picked, I think, for a very good reason. And that is so many of us have been working from home. And for many of us, it's been a godsend. I've worked from home now for over 20 years. And for me, it's been a godsend because my priority was helping to raise our eight children. It's hard to do that. It's hard to homeschool them if you are not at home. So that's what I had done. And I was very privileged to be able to do that. And our kids have all turned out amazingly. Many people are caregivers, and it isn't necessarily just of kids, but right now I'm looking at a survey that was conducted. It's called the Prudential May 2021 Pulse of the American Worker Survey, and they're showing of the 2,000 respondents that 38% identified themselves as caregivers, with nearly 40% of those providing care for school-age children. When you are starting to look at benefit packages, it is important for many families to be able to have some form of child care. And what has snuck in because of the lockdown is that many of us actually can work from home. Many of us have been more productive at home. And then on top of it all, we can take care of our family. So let's look at the stats. We told you about school age children. That's about 40%. 32% are taking care of young children. And this is of the 40%. Of all workers okay so this is a lot of people 30% are caring for someone with a disability some sort of a health issue and 23% are taking care of an older adult that's 40% of the workforce that is a lot of people a lot of people 38% is the exact number so there many of these caregivers are returning to really a traditional work environment where they're going to the office but they have very unique needs and i think every last one of us have to consider that and have to look at it and figure out how can we make things work and when we look at the numbers again for the caregivers 45% say that they've considered leaving the workforce entirely due to personal demands. And 53% are saying that they would retrain for a career in a different field or industry if they had the opportunity. We have some of our best people out there that are taking care of our kids, of our loved ones, of our parents. And again, look at my, at my uh, situation here where I was at home helping to take care of our kids along with my wife. Neither one of us could have carried on a regular job and homeschooled the eight kids. Neither one of us could have done that. What kind of talent might we be losing by squeezing these people out of our workforce, particularly when we've now proven that most businesses can allow their workers to work from home. Now, they found in the survey that there were three primary types of support caregivers, and these types are looking for different types of flexibility. Number one, they're saying 42% wanted increased workplace flexibility. Now, that makes a whole lot of sense, right? So they can work from home. Maybe some of your best employees are people who want to work in another part of the country. I have a friend, his uh, brother-in-law is a real good programmer in this one particular type of programming. I think it's Salesforce. And he is living now in a completely different country on the other side of the world. And yet, He's still doing programming for these people here in the United States. Talking about workplace flexibility, 
He is sitting over there not far from China and is enjoying himself. He loves it there. And of course, his costs are much lower, et cetera, et cetera. So consider that, not just that they might be working from home, but maybe they want to take the kids over to Europe and live there for six months. There's a lot of things people want. So that's 42% of our people that are working, okay? Increased workplace place flexibility. The number two, increased paid time off, 38%. Again, something we got to seriously consider. Now, I know how hard it is to be able to fill in for someone that's on vacation or maybe they're caring for a loved one, maybe they just had a baby, etc. But it's very important when you get right down to it because... Again, who's better for raising our children, us or a stranger who's going to more or less warehouse them? Uh, You have to keep a look at that. There's a great article from the Harvard Business School. It's titled, COVID Killed the, the Traditional Workplace. What should companies do now? That's a very good question because now the lockdown is mostly behind us. Executives can't expect the offices to run the same way they did people to come in and do the same things that they always did but in reality harvard business school faculty members are saying there are ways to keep our employees happy and productive and that is exactly what we're talking about now for many caretakers and caregivers i should say paid time off is more valuable than a pay increase and that's particularly true for those who are at the higher end of the pay scale it gives them a lot more flexibility they can get away sometimes from all of their responsibilities and obligations which is just so important there's here's another one this is a job list survey from cnbc the article is entitled here's how much money workers would give up for better work life balance and they go in in that particular article and say that the average worker who says they currently have work-life balance it would take an extra ten thousand dollars in pay per year for them to give up their personal time i'm not sure that's right i think it would be a lot more than that and it also says just 30 percent of workers said they'd give up part of their pay for better work-life balance and the threshold varies by the type of worker that's where we i think really get into it Now, so those are the first two. The third one is 37%. So these are all within 4% of each other. Greater commitment to health and well-being. Now, I've seen studies before that are saying businesses that put in a gym and put in workout rooms, etc., they never actually see them used the way they expect them to be used. I don't think that's what people are talking about here. But we really are thinking a lot more about health and well-being since so many of us have been scared because of the COVID outbreak. What Maybe I should be paying more attention to our health. But we also have the mental health. Look at all of the problems we've seen from so many mental health issues because of the lockdown. So Harvard again came out and said for employers, it means that we need to signal the health of facilities. It's crucial to attracting people back. So again, the right kinds of air filters, the right kinds of lighting, make sure people feel safe while they're in the office and maybe cut back the number of days that they have to be there. Hey, stick around. We'll be right back. We've got a lot more to cover. You're listening to Craig Peterson, of course, and visit me online, craigpeterson.com. 